Okay, I'm not expecting you to have got full marks on these kind of ones, but just because it's getting used to them. Hopefully, though. Yeah. So 3 to the power of x, Arifal. ln3, I don't like doing it in red, sorry. ln3, either multiply it as a dot or you could do it as a cross, 3 to the power of x, whatever you prefer to do for that one. Ishraq, x cubed. Yeah, don't forget the basics. x cubed obviously differentiates to 3x squared. Don't forget the basics. ln of 3x differentiates to 1 over x. Now we've got 3 to the power of 2x. 2 ln3 times 3 times 3 to the power of 2x. Then we've got 2 to the power of 3x, which will be 3 ln2 times 2 to the power of 3x. OK, then we've got 5 ln x, 5 over x, because it's 5 multiplied by 1 over x when it differentiates. A half e to the half, sorry, e to the half x is differentiated to a half e to the half x, or x over 2. And here we've got 5 ln 2x. That is 5 over x. And look, it's the same as this one that we have here, which is weird. Those two graphs have actually got the same gradients at the same points. And we'll, we'll look at that in, in the future. Now, this one's a bit different because it's not being differentiated with respect to x. It is being differentiated with respect to t. Those things kind of have to match each other. So that one is just going to be ln 9 multiplied by 9 to the power of t. And this one? Five times ln four, or five ln four, multiplied by four to the power of x. Arifal's not allowed to say anymore. He's the only one saying them. Okay. Um, so we've got x to the power of four, Taylor. Yeah. Don't forget the basics. Okay. Don't start doing random things with these. Um, Lock ln of six x. One over x. And what about six ln x? Good. Six over x. And then Ishraq three e to the two x. 6e to the 2x. And then the last one, Shahan? Uh, minus, one times e to the minus, x. minus 1 times e to the minus x. So the k in this case was actually a minus 1. And so we've just pulled down a minus. Instead of a minus 1, we're just pulling down a minus that we've got there. Now, it does feel like I'm just telling you some rules. For sine and cos, I at least showed you a little bit about where they came from. It's weird with differentiation. I need to kind of get into some of doing some, some of this stuff. And then the rules are going to help explain some of these things the other way around. I think it's kind of a neat way to do it. I like the idea of being able to differentiate things with rules and then learning why the rules work. I think it's a good way of doing things. So uh, I'm just going to see how this could come up in like the context of a question. They're not always just going to be as simple as differentiate this thing that you know how to do. This one says expand this thing that we've got first. So we're going to try and differentiate y equals e to the x plus 2 squared. For some reason, our brains find it a little bit easier to expand them when we've written them out twice. Some people can do it not written out, so out twice. Some people like to write it out twice. Um, just think to yourself, what does e to the power of x multiplied by e to the power of x? e to the power of x times e to the power of x. It's e to the power of 2x. Yeah, sometimes people think when they do e to the power of x times e to the power of x, sometimes people wrongly say it's e to the power of x squared. But that's not what you do with powers. What do you do with the powers? You add them. So it's e to the power of 2x. So I'm going to have e to the power of 2x plus 2e to the 2x. Sorry, just 2e to the x plus 2e to the x plus 4. So it's e to the 2x plus 4e to the x, plus 4. And so I can differentiate it. e to the 2x differentiates to 4e to the x, 4e to the x, and 4 disappears, goes. OK? So pretty simple there, differentiating uh, a function that isn't of a form we know how to do. So we do something to it to put it in a form that we know how to do. Now, these next questions you may find tricky if you haven't done enough of the catch-up work on logarithms, but we're going to do them anyway because it's good for you to see these things if you haven't had a chance to do these. Do I need to stay on this page a bit longer? No? Okay. So, rather pleasant topic here. A child has head lice and his parents treat it using a special shampoo. A population, the population P of head lice after T days can be modelled using P equals 460 multiplied by 3 to the power of minus 2t. 
determine how many days have elapsed, blah, blah, blah. Well, the first thing I actually want to do here is I want to put this on Desmos to show you what's happening. Now, does anyone have any prediction of what they think is going to happen to the graph? It's going to decrease. It's going to decrease. How did you know it's going to decrease, Nabil? It's going to stutter on <laughs> okay, so he's, he's thinking that the special shampoo is going to definitely work. But I was hopefully looking for the maths reason, because the power is negative, okay? I mean, it could be a terrible shampoo. It could be the other way around. Someone could, there could be an exponential. So let's have a look. Oh, I've got it here. I'm not going to do it with T, I'm going to do it with X instead, okay? <laughs> okay, so... So this is what the graph looks like, OK? The graph looks pretty dramatic, actually. I'm not sure this is the best graph. So looks like something to do with the population. The population, when t is 0, when x is 0, is 460, which is saying at the start of this poor child's life, he's got 460 nits on his hair. But look, the graph is pretty, it kind of drops down pretty quick. And it looks like after, oh, this scale is so weird. It's because I'm in, if I do it in, it looks like in about three or four days, probably four days, all the lice are going to go. OK? That's what the graph is telling us. Anyway, let's go back and see what we've got here. It says, first of all, determine how many days have elapsed before the child has 20 head lice left. So. 20 head lice left means that the child has got a population of 20 lice living on its hair, head. So I'm going to replace P with 20. So 20 equals 460, 3 to the power of minus 2T. I'm then going to divide both sides by 460 and hopefully find where I put my calculator. So I'm going to need it. So we've got 1 over 23 equals 3 to the power of minus 2t. Now, if you've done your work on exponentials here, you should be able to work out what minus 2t is. Now, this is the power. So minus 2t is going to be equal to the power of base 3 that gives you the answer 1 over 23. This is changing this from an exponential statement into a logarithmic statement. It's telling me the base is 3, the answer I get is 1 over 23, and that's the power that I had. Okay? If you're not sure how to do this, we, I can do some revision videos on these things as well. So I'm literally going to type into my calculator log base 3, 1 over 23. Your calculators can do that. Uh, can, do that. Um, can they do that? Oh, yes, at the top. Log base 3, 1 over 23. So you get minus 2t is equal to this. And so t is equal to 1.43 days. And that's to two decimal places, which was kind of in line with what our graph said. And I'll kind of put the graph up for a second. We want to know when there were 20 nits. So 20 nits is here. Yeah, that looks about like 1.43. So our math seems to have worked there. Nothing's been to do with differentiation. You're probably like, why the hell is there a question about head lice? Because of this next bit of the question has got some things to do with uh, differentiation. It says, determine the rate of change of head lice after three days. The rate of change of head lice is how the population is changing with respect to time. DP, DT, this thing here means the rate of change of P, the rate of change of P. And we're going to do loads more on this in the future. So for now, it's just looking at this one example that we've got. So the rate of change of P. We want to find out what is DP, DT when T equals 3. So...
we have that p is 460 multiplied by 3 to the power of minus 2t. And I'm going to differentiate it to find dp dt. What's that going to differentiate to? Minus 2 from the power, ln 3 from this, and the 460. Don't forget the 460. All of that multiplied by 460 and multiplied by 3 to the power of minus 2t. So we multiply by the minus 2 from here, the ln 3 from here, and the 460 from here. That is the rate of change of the head lice on this child's head. So that is dp dt is equal to 460 times 2. That's minus 920 ln 3 times 3 to the power of minus 2t. Now, I don't want you to type anything in your calculator just yet. I want you to think about what kind of answer you would expect. Considering the bill has told us about this shampoo and it's going to kill the lice, what kind of number do we expect for the rate of change of the population of the lice? Negative. We expect negative. And we've seen the graph and we know that it's going to be negative. So I'm going to type this into my calculator. I'm going to do minus 920 multiplied by ln3 multiplied by 3 to the power of minus 6. And I get minus 1.39. Now, what do you think the units of this is? This is weird. It's sort of weird. It's the rate of change of head lice. Yeah, it's the change in lice per day. And that comes from P is for lice, for the population of the lice, and T is for the day. So it's saying by the third day, only 1.39 lice are dying per day at that particular point of the day. If I put in a different value of T, let's say if I put in that T was 1, what do you think will be true about the population of the lice and day one rather than day three? Do you think they'll be dying quicker or more slowly? And they'll be dying more quickly at the beginning because you've just put all the shampoo in and the graph was steeper. So if I type in 920 ln3 times three to the power of minus two, what have I done wrong here? Three to the power of minus two you get minus 112. So on day one, the shampoo was killing 112 lice per day. And then on day three, it had gone down to this. And that's because when you look at the graph, on day one, look, the, the rate of change is coming down really, really steeply. And on day three, it's not very steep at all. And you've probably seen pr probably more exponential graphs than any other students I've ever taught because of the pandemic. And so these are all exponential graphs, OK? These are all exponential graphs. So you're quite lucky to be studying differentiation at this time because <laughs> you, you'll at least be able to use it when you're trying to understand all these things that are going on, OK? I'm going to do just one more example, and then we'll do a few questions as practice. This one is a little bit harder, I think. Population often has stuff to do with um, exponential growth, actually very similar to what we were saying with the pandemic. Exponential growth is kind of like the population of the virus, like as it moves around. And it's the same thing with like the populations of the head lice or these rabbits that we've got here. So this one says a rabbit population P after T years can be modeled using this formula. Determine after how many years the rate of population will reach 20,000 rabbits per year. So it says how many years the rate of population increase will reach 20,000 rabbits per year. Rate of population increase. That's not saying the population. It is saying the rate of population. So what is rate of population? dp dt. So we want to know when dp dt is 20,000. So if p is 1,000 multiplied by 2 to the power of t, we're going to find out what dp dt is. Red one, do you think you could differentiate that for me? Yeah, you can have a look at the thing. 
Yeah. Good. Times two to the power t. And remember, we've still got the thousand there as well. So I'm going to just put the thousand at the beginning like that. Okay. So that's the thing differentiated. We're now going to try and make that equal 20,000. So 20,000, that's the rate of change. In fact, it's the rate of increase. If it was said a population decrease, I would have wanted to put a negative in front of it. So 20,000 equals 1,000 ln 2 times 2 to the power of t. So I'm going to divide by 1,000. So I've got 20, and I'll divide by ln 2. So that's 20 over ln 2 equals 2 to the power of t. And does anyone think they could change that to a logarithm statement for me? Log, Log base 2. 20 over ln2 is equal to t. So I'm just going to type that in my calculator and then we're done. So log of base 2, 20 over ln2. And we get 4.85 years to two decimal places. Do you see how the differentiation is just the same that we did when you did all those questions on one page? It's just starting to throw in some other things that we've got here. And I'll just put this on Desmos so you can see what's happening to the rabbit. So it's 1,000 to the power of 2t. Sorry, 1,000 times 2 to the power of t. Now, this is going to be a very, very, very quick So rabbits notoriously breed very, very quickly. The rabbit population down here is on the first day 1,000. I mean, this is crazy. This is not realistic at all. But like, like how quickly the population is increasing. Like, I think this is not a very. Um, and it just goes up exponentially fast. Okay, this is the kind of scenario we're trying to avoid in the pandemic, um, which is why even at the beginning. Even at the beginning, when something doesn't look like that much of a big deal, it doesn't look like much of an increase, it takes, it's very quick for things to start getting pretty extreme. And that's really the message that we're, that we're living through at the moment. No so. <laughs> okay, so that's us done, ready for exercise 9A and 9B.